Born Mary Mudders on the 11th of August 1642 in Canterbury, England, very little is known about her early years. In her 20s, Mary Carlton was thrown in jail for bigamy because she abandoned her first husband to marry a wealthy surgeon. But after escaping prison with an acquittal, Mary decided to leave England and travel to the city of Cologne. Mary was already a criminal. Germany gave her the chance to reinvent herself. And it all started with an affair with a much older German nobleman. Mary's lover was generous. He gave her several fine and valuable jewels, a gold chain and large sums of money. But when he pressed her in marriage, Mary skipped town, taking the gifts and money with her. After several years away, she decided to return to London, where she pretended to be a German princess. She already had a criminal record in 1663, but she couldn't miss the chance to return to London. And with the riches from her noble German lover, Mary was able to return in style. She used her wealth to fill people into thinking she was a German princess. Thanks to some well-placed tears, Mary was easily able to convince London's wealthy class that she was the poor orphaned princess Van Volwe from Cologne. In her tale, she had fled to London escaping a possessive lover by flashing the jewellery she'd stolen from Germany along with forged letters from abroad. Mary convinced everyone that she was a real princess. She used her disguise to nab her third husband, John Carlton. Mary used letters to fill men into thinking her stolen identities were real, but an anonymous letter nearly destroyed her life after Mary wed John Carlton in her disguise as a German princess. Apparently not everyone had fallen for her disguise. Her husband received an anonymous letter exposing Mary. It said she has already married several men in the county of Kent and afterwards made off with all the money she could get into her hands. When he read the letter he flew into a rage and had Mary arrested. It was the second time she'd been thrown into prison for the crime of bigamy. It looked unlikely that she would escape again, but Mary was crafty and she soon came up with a defence that eventually won over the court and made her famous in London. Mary accused John of lying to her instead of admitting to her con. Mary accused her husband of pretending to be a wealthy aristocrat. She even sued him for not being as rich as he promised. During her trial, Mary pled not guilty and said to John, you cheated me and I you. You told me you were a lord and I told you I was a princess. She laughed and mocked her husband during the trial and the act convinced the jury to let Mary go free. Mary wasn't shy about the spotlight. After she escaped prison the second time, she became instantly famous. Even the diarist Samuel Pepys visited her and admired her wit and spirit. Eventually, Mary used her 15 minutes of fame to venture into theatre. She even starred in a play based on her own life called The German Princess. As Mary said in character, you think me a bull cheat, but which of you are not? Men began clamouring for her attention. 
She received valuable gifts, jewels and money, but she couldn't leave behind the polygamous lifestyle. So she eventually married one of her admirers. Unsurprisingly, she ran away with all of his money while he was in a drunken stupor. Well into her 20s, when Mary had already been married at least four times, she disguised herself as a rich virgin heiress. She recycled her story as the German princess and claimed she was fleeing from a suitor who her father wanted her to marry. The story netted several new suitors who Mary promptly robbed and abandoned. Mary didn't have a noble background at all. She was born in Canterbury and her father was a fiddler. She married a shoemaker named Thomas Steadman. The marriage was not a happy one. Mary gave birth to two children, both who died in infancy. She said she was unhappy because her husband wasn't wealthy. He couldn't support her in the splendour she always aimed, so she ran away. In order to convince men she was wealthy, Mary had an accomplice mail her letters with tales about her family and their wealth. One time Mary used a nosy landlady to her advantage. The landlady found the letters and instantly set Mary up with her nephew, not realising the trap. Mary took advantage arranging for a new letter to arrive that falsely claimed her brother had died, leaving her an enormous inheritance. Because of the money, Mary's father supposedly wanted her to marry a man she hated. Mary's new lover, the landlady's nephew, instantly proposed. Mary stole all of his money and left him heartbroken. She earned the nickname The Grey Widow because she wasn't actually a widow at all. She didn't wait for her husbands to die before remarrying. In fact, no one knows how many times Mary tricked men into marriage, only to steal their money and run away. The men may have been too embarrassed to come forward with their stories, but Mary spent over 10 years ensnaring and robbing London's wealthiest men before authorities caught her. She didn't work alone. She had a number of accomplices, including a maid who helped her steal money, friends who forged letters about her fake wealthy family, and a landlady who Mary double-crossed in Cologne. That landlady was helping Mary fleece a rich German man who wanted to marry her. But when he proposed, Mary tricked the accomplice, the landlady, to rush off and hire a carriage. As soon as the landlady left, Mary broke open the chest containing all the gifts from the German, which she was supposed to share with the landlady. But Mary was resolved this time to have all the booty for herself. She stole it and run back to England. Not surprisingly, a con artist like Mary didn't make a very good partner in crime. London wasn't big enough for Mary to keep stealing from this same group of men. She was so infamous that a detective recognised her while he was looking for a different thief and had her thrown into prison. Bigamy was notoriously difficult to prove. When Mary was arrested in 1658, she was acquitted because her first husband, a shoemaker, did not appear in court against her. While in London, Mary decided to marry again. And again, she was acquitted because of insufficient evidence. If Mary's first two encounters with the law convinced her that she could get away with anything, she would soon learn that she was wrong. She was arrested after stealing a silver tankard and was sentenced to penal transportation and sent to Port Royal in Jamaica in 1671. 
where she worked as a prostitute. However, in 1672, she either sneaked or conned her way aboard a ship and returned again to London, pretending to be a rich heiress and married an apothecary at Westminster. Naturally, she stole his money and left him. In December 1672, when a turnkey from Newgate Prison, while searching for stolen loot at the time, recognised her. On the 16th of January 1673, she was tried in the Old Bailey. Because she had returned from penal transportation without permission, she was sentenced to death. She tried to plea her belly, but a jury of matrons was brought in to examine her and found that this was not the case. At the place of execution at Tyburn, she told the wailing crowd that she had been a very vain woman, yet she hoped God would forgive her as she forgave her enemies. She was hanged on the 22nd of January 1673 and buried at the St. Martin's Churchyard. Later, someone wrote on her grave, The German princess here, against her will, lies underneath, and yet, O oh strange, lies still. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.